competition. Bedlam. Today, 15th BCS ranked Oklahoma tackles interstate rival Oklahoma State for their annual tradition of high intensity football. The Bedlam Series. And with a Texas Longhorns loss on Friday, the Sooners are playing for more than bragging rights. The Big 12 South title is on the line, while the Cowboys have their sights on postseason bowling. When these two conference arch rivals go face to face, anything can happen. The fight for Oklahoma and the Big 12 South title on the line. It will be Bedlam in Stillwater this afternoon. Are you ready for Bedlam from Boone Pickens Stadium in Stillwater, Oklahoma? It's Big 12 football presented by Kia Sara. Today, number 15 Oklahoma will face the Oklahoma State Cowboys in the 101st renewal of the Bedlam rivalry game. And it got a whole lot more interesting in the Big 12 South thanks to Texas A&M yesterday bumping off the University of Texas. As a result, Oklahoma with a win today heads to Kansas City to play for the Big 12 championship. Welcome everyone, I'm Bill Land along with Gary Reasons. A little more fuel on the fire thanks to the Aggies. No doubt about that. This ball game takes some significant changes. But we talked to both coaches, and they said, no, nothing really changes. But you can't tell that to the fans and I think even the players. It should be a lot of fun out there, Bill. Well, for the Oklahoma team, injury update. Once again, no Adrian Peterson. The collarbone has not healed enough for him to play today. But they've actually done very well without him, if you can believe that. They've got a great running group. Adrian Peterson, the numbers that he's put up. These are the top rushing performances. You throw Alan Patrick in there and who we will see today, Chris Brown. They've got a great job running the football. The Sooners have. They've controlled the football. Chris Brown, who's going to get this start, will be his second start of his career. 169 yards last week against the, against the Baylor Bears. He's a guy that has a lot of elusiveness, and he's a power runner. Now, on the other side for Oklahoma State, very balanced team, but the running game is critical. It's been more by committee for the year, but lately the go-to guy has become Dantrell Savage. Well, Dantrell Savage has done a great job running the ball for the Pokes, and I tell you what, they are the number one rushing football team in the Big 12 Conference, and they've done a great job with it. Dantrell Savage is emerging as a star, and what he has done with the football in his hands is really remarkable. He's got He's got great quickness, great elusiveness, and great speed. Mike Gundy talked about him, and he saw him in training camp and said, hey, this guy's got a bright future. He certainly has played that way the last couple of weeks for the Cowboys. Should be fun. You never know what will happen here. In 01, Rashawn Woods with a big catch as OSU upset the Sooners. Last year, Adrian Peterson went nuts for Oklahoma. Coming up next, we'll go to the studio. Mike Goldberg and the crew in L.A. as we get ready for Bedlam. The Cowboys have won the toss. They've elected to receive. And as a result, OU will kick it off with Garrett Hartley. You saw him lining up. Tommy Devereaux and Grant Jones are the deep fellas for Oklahoma State. Jones is a guy that's already taken one back for a touchdown and is number one in the nation in kick return. Here is Hartley's kick. Jones from the goal line. Breaks the tackle to the 15, trying to muscle his way and does so just past the 20 yard line. Tackle made by DJ Wolf of the Sooners. Let's take a look at our Kia Sara starting lineups. First of all, for Oklahoma State, Bobby Reed, the sophomore out of Houston, Texas, leads him at quarterback. He has thrown for 22 touchdowns so far this year, and his total yards at 24 18. He's starting to break some marks set by his coach, Mike Gundy. Bill, and his improvement this year at the quarterback spot for the Cowboys is a huge reason for their success offensively. We'll take a look at their, their numbers. They have steadily moved up the charts in all categories. Uh, toasted in motion. And the Cowboys keep it on the ground with Savage. Gets out to just across the 25-yard line. Alexander made the tackle. Now our Kiyosera offensive group for the Cowboys up front. Hilliard, Caning, as well as Washington Seafried, who was an original walk-on. He's quite a story. And Okung. And the second were the receivers in the backs. Savage's guys become the man of the moment. Bowman is a big-time playmaker, number one in the league in yards receiving per game. Oklahoma State with the football. Second and five. Bobby Reed. And it is complete. And that will be a first down as he completes it to Keith Toaston, the freshman from Angleton, Texas. Now defensively, let's take a look for the Oklahoma Sooners. One of the top defenses in the country. And Burdine, Coleman, Bennett, and Thibodeau have been creating havoc up front. 
Alexander, an all-conference pick a year ago, their leading tackler, Walker, Williams, Smith, and Holmes in the secondary. Williams got banged up last week, and I believe Lewis Baker is getting the call in his place here today. We'll keep track of that. It is first and 10 for OSU. The Cowboys on the ground. Great play action by Reed, and Savage takes advantage of it as he bolts to the 42-yard line. Reggie Smith, the safety, makes the tackle. Our Mitsubishi Motors keys to the game. We start with the pucks. Well, I think they need to get out early, play well offensively. You see him here getting Dontrell Savage going run of the football. They've got to get the return dominance. They've got a great kick and punt return game. And I think on defense, they've got to relentlessly pursue the football and get to those OU running backs. They can have a big day defensively against this football team if they're able to slow the OU running game somehow. Savage, he has stopped for a loss at the 40 yard line as Zach Latimer, a senior from Denver, Colorado, making the stop. Now let's take a look at the Sooners keys. Well, Oklahoma in this football game, Bill, there's no doubt about it. They've had fumble-itis. They've dropped too many balls. They lead the nation, put 21 balls on the ground. But I think on defense, they've got to pick your poison. What do they want to do with Oklahoma State? They want to defend their running game or their passing game. It's going to be interesting to see what they do there. Make that kicker be a dear part of their heart. Garrett Hartley's done a great job for them this year in the field goal area. It's okay to kick field goals in, a, I think, a tight, close ball game that we'll see here today. Yeah, he's at 17 of 18 on the year. Third and three for the Cowboys' first possession. Reed completes it, Bowman, 45-50, and out of bounds, and they'll maintain possession, first and 10. Marcus Walker makes the tackle for Oklahoma. We see Oklahoma State doing a lot of different things with the football here, running the football, but also throwing it out. Darius Bowman, who is a dangerous receiver, he's 6'5", he's a great frame. Watch him with the, putting a stiff arm out there, and he just tries to get separation. No chance for Marcus Walker to get to his body to make a tackle. Darius Bowman is a big play weapon in this Oklahoma State offense. Now look at those numbers. He picks up 12 yards here in a first and 10 for OSU in Oklahoma territory. Bowman's gone. And it's complete across the middle this time to Woods. Yeah, and Zach Robinson made the pass at quarterback. Exactly right. That's a little different shift that they do. They'll take Zach Robinson, throw him in there, and they'll throw the quarterback to the outside as a wide receiver. Zach Robinson's got a good command of the football. They like his passing ability, throwing it inside on the route there. So very good job. And Latimer making the tackle on Dewan Woods. Tenth play of the drive for Oklahoma State, a team second in the league in scoring at 36 plus a game. Robinson back in at quarterback. And he completes it to Woods. Breaks the tackle, dives near the 20 yard line. He stepped out of bounds just before as Jason Carter makes the tackle for Oklahoma. Well, Oklahoma, they need to get to the quarterback not doing it on this play because Zach Robinson has plenty of time to throw the football back there and not even tight coverage at all on Dewan Woods on the outside. You take a look at Zach Robinson. He's got protection here. He's going to look to the right side of the field, then come back to the left side, and he's going to get the ball out to Dewan Woods. So they've got soft coverage. You see the corner blitz there coming. Not enough, not in time to stop the throw to get out to Dewan Woods. And the Cowboys, first and 10. Oklahoma hadn't touched the football yet. And this is an Oklahoma defense that is best in the league, allowing just 265 yards a game. Reed got a man and caught at the five yard line as Marcus Walker was covering on the play. Had to see if that ball was trapped or not, and it's a gain of 15 yards. Well, Darius Bowman doing a good job of catching the football early in this ball game. They want to get the ball to him. He's a playmaker for him. We talked to Mike Gundy about how are they going to defend him? How do teams defend a Darius Bowman? They say they do it different ways. If they can get matchups where it's one on one, they feel like they can get the ball to a Darius. First and goal at the five after Bowman's reception sets him up. Savage punches it in. Touchdown, Oklahoma State. with his seventh touchdown of the year. Well, I talked about getting out early, and that's exactly what Oklahoma State does on his opening drive, running the football effectively with Dontrell Savage and also throwing the ball to one of their big playmakers, Adarius Bowman, getting great yardage there and a great job of using your different personnel. Zach Robinson coming in, playing a little quarterback along with Bobby Reed here for the Cowboys. Jason Ricks for the point after. He's a sophomore from Round Rock, Texas, just outside Austin, where you know they're all watching today. And this kick... 
is good. Oklahoma State impressive indeed. Savage caps off a 79-yard touchdown drive to open the football game. We'll be right back in Stillwater. Oklahoma State, a little bold taste to start this game as they take the opening kick and drive it 79 yards for a TD by Savage. And our Dodge scoring drive, they eat up 5, 11, 12 plays, and Savage gets the score. And Oklahoma State leads at 7-0. Bruce Redden will kick it off now for Oklahoma State. And the Sooners will decide to down it in the end zone as Smith will set it up. It'll be first and 10 at the 20 on the touchback. And Kiyosera gives our starting lineups. Paul Thompson has been absolutely incredible as a senior out of Leander, Texas. Passing for over 2,000 yards, 17 touchdowns to just seven interceptions. Keeps him out of the bad play. Yeah, when well, we talked to Bob Stoops about him, I asked him, I say, who is your MVP or MVPs for this football team? First words out of his mouth, that young man, Paul Thompson. He said couldn't say enough about Paul Thompson, the character that he brings to this football team, and how well he has played on the field this season. Found out in August he was coming back as a quarterback, not a wide receiver, when Bomar was dismissed from the team, and he has been superb. First and 10, and Patrick bolts right up the middle. 35, 40, 45. How's that ankle? Alan Patrick, who missed the last game because of a sprained ankle, and the coaches told us, we think he's ready to go. I guess so. Yeah, they actually had a list of Chris Brown as a starter, but take a look at him. Alan Patrick. He's not missing a step. He's showing he's still got that great speed. Bill, I watched him warm up, and he looked like he's the same old Alan Patrick that we saw a couple weeks back doing great things on the ground, running that football. And, with him in the ball game and the ability to bring Chris Brown in to help him spell, they've got a couple of tailbacks that give OU some great running power. Missed two games, last played against AM when he had 173 yards on 32 carries. And then Gutierrez and Brown took over the last two games. Now, let's take a look at Kia Serra presenting our lineups here. As you saw Patrick Alay change up front. Messner's the old guy, the rest are youngsters. They call him dad for his leadership. And Brown, I'm sure we'll see him today. Eldridge has been superb at the tight end as a blocker. We've also got Iglesias and Kelly, who are big time game breakers. And Finley is a guy who got a touchdown last week in the receiving game against Baylor. And again. That's Chris Brown, Bill. That's Chris your second carry. He, yeah. They brought Alan Patrick out after that first play, and they put uh, Chris Brown in the football game. Now, defensively, our Kia Sara lineups for Oklahoma State up front. You've got Smith, McBean, Brown, and Victor DeGrade who's missed the last two games. He's got eight and a half sacks on the year. He is key. You see you Nathan as well as Johnson and Levine in the secondary. Van Zant, Woods, Sexton, their leading tackler overall. Now I'm looking on the fielder. I don't see Victor DeGrade out there yet. They're going with number 97. Marquis found that one defensive end. He's done a great job as well coming in there for DeGrade. So perhaps he's just not ready to go yet. Third and one, Oklahoma and Brown again. Rumbles to the 39-yard line, and the tackle made by Johnson. Gary, what I like about this game, we already saw a quarterback flip-flop for Oklahoma State that didn't necessarily expect the opening series. And then Oklahoma says, well, we'll show you a little Patrick. Boom, he bolts one up the middle. Well, now here's Chris Brown. Well, that's what you got, fresh legs. Chris, uh, Alan Patrick comes in there, runs the football with a lot of speed right through the hole. Nobody touches him going through the line. And then you bring Chris Brown in, who's a little bit more of a durable back, I think. He's got a lot of... A little, a little better lower center of gravity. He runs the ball well, and he breaks tackles. Brown, 5'10", 190, a freshman out of Alexandria, Louisiana. And now Thompson. He's got good straight-ahead speed. He is corralled here near the 37-yard line. But Anderson had 935 yards when he exited. Still second overall in the Big 12. Thompson got all day and completes it to Finley. He's got a first down before he's popped out of bounds near the 13, and Van Zant there covering him. Well, if you ever want to look at a quarterback and see what his decision-making ability is, this is Paul Thompson at his best on this play. He has a receiver at the goal line, and he chooses not to throw that football because there was double coverage there. Quickly pumps it and goes back to the outside to Finley on the edge, who gets a you know five, six-yard gain, but still a first down for the Sooners. That's impressive for a quarterback to do that. And I know that Bob Stoops is very pleased with how he has played, not only this season, but early in the ballgame. So Mike Gundy without the hat, trying to get his defense fired up here. Patrick broke a couple, and 
powers his way down near the three-yard line where Andre Sexton makes the tackle. Well, I don't know if uh, Alan Patrick was a Herber in high school, but he's a Herber in college because he did just that on this play. Instead of going in there hitting contact, he just takes that right leg, that lead leg. If you're uh, going to be a Herber, take a look at this x mode slow motion here. Good job with this camera work. It comes right over his offensive line. That's pretty cool stuff. That is a push. All right. First and goal to go for Oklahoma. Patrick cannot muscle his way in. Helmets come rolling out of there. <laughs> yeah, it is Bedlam, folks. Johnson and Levine make the tackle. Oklahoma's won the last three in this series and dominant overall 77, 16, and 7 in favor of the Sooners. So Bill, if there's one knock here on this Oklahoma State football team, it really is what they have done defensively. Take a look at Oklahoma's, what they've done in the, in the red zone. Almost perfect this year. They lead the Big 12 Conference in that area. But Oklahoma State's defense giving up 376 yards a game. Not near where they'd like to be. They've made improvements there, but they haven't gotten to the level of consistent play defensively that I'm sure that Mike Gundy's trying to strive for. Second and goal from the three, and this time Oklahoma is in. Touchdown, Chris Brown. Brown gets his fifth score of the year, and it's a 7-6 ball game pending the kick. Well, you got some Sooner fans here, no doubt about it. It's Bedlam, and it's going to be a great ball game. I think it's going to be like this. It's very physical, very intense. These players have come to play. Running the football effectively are the Sooners early in this ball game. Alan Patrick, Chris Brown as well. The two of them getting the job done on the ground for Oklahoma. And now the Sooners try to tie it up as Garrett Hartley. Very mentioned what a valuable tool he's been for him. 39 of 39 in the PAT department. And no problem, he booms it through, and the Sooners have tied up the Cowboys here. Brown gets the TD, and your serve Oklahoma State as Oklahoma evens it up on its first possession. We'll be right back. Welcome back here, Bill and Gary Reasons, Jim Knox, Emily Jones, Dodge scoring drive, Brown capping off the 80-yard, 13-play drive on a three-yard run, and Devereaux and Jones await Hartley's kick, and it is taken by Oklahoma State's Devereaux. The 15, 20, spins 30, and powered forward to the 32-yard line. So Oklahoma State will get pretty good field position, a 28-yard return. Mike Gundy saying this game comes down a lot of times to just pure toughness. As who wants it the most here? That ends our first quarter with the score Oklahoma 7, Oklahoma State 7. You're watching Big 12 football presented by Kia Serra. We'll return after this word from Dr. Pepper, your local Dr. Pepper Bob. Welcome back. Oklahoma and Oklahoma State nodded at seven as we enter the second quarter. Third and 11 coming up for Oklahoma State here. Reed keeps the football and he's crunched pretty good. Near the 26-yard line, Larry Burdine unloading the senior out of Lawton, Oklahoma. Yeah, choosing to go the down-the-line option here on third and long, third and 11 with uh, Bobby Reed coming around the edge, and he pays for it. Larry Burdine not getting a sack, but getting a firm tackle on him after a gain of about five yards. So, so Matt Fodge, who's one of the best punters this year in the Big 12, have a chance to perhaps flip the field for Mike Gundy. Odds at 46.1, as longest as a 72-yarder. Sophomore from Garland, Texas, in the Dallas area. Reggie Smith deep on his own 30. Five. He booms it. Fair catch. Smith takes care of business at the 32 plus. 42 yard punt for Oklahoma State's Fodge. 7 7 in Stillwater. It is second down and seven at the 50 yard line right now for Oklahoma. And Patrick. He zips down to the 42-yard line where Roderick Johnson makes the tackle. You might recall that Washington got hurt earlier for OSU on that offensive series. Here's Emily Jones with more. Well, guys, the Oklahoma State trainers had him down on the table working on his left knee. He got up off the table and put on his helmet, so look for David Washington to return on the next Cowboys offensive series. All right, let's hope that's the case. Good news. Great if he can do it. Don't want anybody to get hurt, but especially on a Bedlam Saturday when you're an Oklahoma kid. First to 10 as he tests it there. Oklahoma trying to see if they can take 
leadership of this game. Brown, huge hole. 30, 25, and tripped up where he was to the house. Well, kind of a misdirection here in the backfield. Paul Thompson looks like he's going to pitch it out to his right side, but he comes back to the opposite side to Chris Brown. He's at the tailback spot, and good blocking up front there. Trent Williams, look at the counter step there. Then he comes right back this way with him. Gets in the hole. Watch number 71 lead through there. That's Trent Williams. Going to help Chris Brown get on down the field. When you got a big guy who can knock people to the ground like that, you're going to make a lot of yards. 16 yards that time. He's 10 carries, 47 yards. Alan Patrick here, he's 11 for 64. So they're splitting it up to take over for Peterson today. And a first to 10 for Oklahoma. And Brown slips through a one tackler. It's down to the 23. Marque Fountain, junior out of Missouri City, Texas, Houston area, makes the stop. Well, same play, opposite side. And trying to run it inside that time instead of off the tackle. Oklahoma doing a good job, as you talk about here, Bill, running the football, controlling it, controlling the clock, and got great field position here. They definitely want to take care of the football here. Remember, fumbleitis is one of the keys. Well, they've had fumbleitis all year. They don't want to put the ball on the ground here to these Cowboys. There's the rushing story here today. Oklahoma leading the way. Second down and nine. And again, it is Patrick with Johnson making the tackle. And here they're running into the sun. Because here you tell your backs go east-west. This field is one of the few in the country that is lined up east-west. You don't go north-south here if you want to score touchdowns. That sun can come into play, though, uh, particularly in the passing situation. Yeah, we saw Rod Johnson coming out of the ball game again. He's injured. It looks like he's coming out gingerly. So Marcus Brown back in there. Brooklyn State, stay the middle linebacker spot. Third down and six here at the 21-yard line. Big play for Oklahoma. And right up the middle is Alan Patrick. And Patrick takes it down near the 14. That'll move the chains for the Sooners. Johnson and Levine, the tacklers for Oklahoma State. An explosive run there by Alan Patrick coming right through the guard tackle area. And good job of blocking up front. And he just kind of lowered his head. And looks like he's healthy, Bill. That ankle, not a problem for him today. That Oklahoma rushing attack that is third in the league at eight, 184 a game. OSU's leading at 216. But Patrick, you see, very healthy today. 13 for 74. And a first down at the 19 of the Cowboys. Finley, the man in motion, resets. Patrick. To protect the football down to the 14. And... Brown made the tackle. Barry Sanders, he got folks' attention coming out early. Remember, he played behind Thurman Thomas the year before. He had four 300-yard rushing games that season, Gary. Wow, that's impressive. If you can get over 100 yards, it's impressive, but four 300-yard games. I'm sure the defensive coordinators that were watching him on tape throughout that se season were like, what in the world are we getting ourselves into? Barry Sanders, I tell you, he's one of the best, if not the best of all time. You can argue that point. Unbelievable. Second down and 11 from the 15. And again, nothing doing this time as Johnson makes the tackle on Allen Patrick. You see Oklahoma doing a good job of ball security as the coaches preach. That's been a driving force because they turned it over five times last week, even though they won. Yeah, they need to hold on to that football. We talked about that. You see Rod Johnson's numbers on the year. He's back in the football game, kind of nursing the early, early ball game injury, but kind of split time in there with Marcus Brown at the Mike linebacker spot. So third down here and long here. Still can get a first down though inside the five-yard line. And take a look at Oklahoma's fumbles on the season, 21. That's the worst in Division I college football. Bob Stoops said the only thing he can think is because they emphasize it so much is telling his young players they all want to do so well and make the big play. Sometimes you have to know when to sacrifice a little bit of that extra effort and reaching to just make sure that you guarantee that you keep possession of the football. Kelly had an example last week when he had over a 50-yard possession and ended up fumbling it away as uh, he was trying to get in the end zone. And here we are with a timeout, and it's 7-7. Big third and 10 coming up here for the Sooners. Thompson. Touchdown Oklahoma as he hits Joaquin Iglesias. Iglesias, a sophomore from Colleen, Texas, on the TD reception. Well, they try to blitz the Sooners here on this play, Bill. Oklahoma State just gets there a little bit too late, and a great block in the backfield allowed Paul Thompson to throw it out to, uh, to Joaquin Iglesias on the outside. Watch Chris Patrick here come across and make the late block. Just got a hand on him, not able to get Paul Thompson in the great athletic play there by 
Iglesias in the end zone. Nice little pump fake, and the ball gets out there nicely. Paul Thompson's got a good touch on the football. Iglesias, a 13-yard reception for the TD. Remember, he returned that kick for a touchdown last week after the safety down there in Waco against Baylor. Hartley for the point after, and off the... Well, off the post, it's definitely yeah. a dead, 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 dead ball. ball. I thought that ball went off the upright. Yes. And the scramble for it, maybe one of the players that thought it had hit another player, but that was not the case. It was. Now, the official should have just whistled that dead as soon as it hit the, the, the post, and I'm surprised that none of them did. Hartley's first miss this season. Last year, he was 37 of 38. He's now 40 of 41 this year. And let's go back, though, to take a look at the play that has given Oklahoma the lead. Well, good job here by Iglesias, just finding the football. Quentin Moore on the outside. He doesn't take the same path that Joaquin does. He goes up nicely forward and good concentration. If you're a young receiver watching Joaquin do what he did there, put his eyes, his chin, his chin actually followed him all the way to the football. That's how you know you have, have a concentration on making that catch. And as a result, we have a 13 to seven game in favor of Oklahoma. And Bob Stoops standing by with our Jim Knox. All right, thank you, Bill. Coach, you gotta be pleased. You set a key in this game, balance. You score on the running game, you score in the passing game. You're doing a nice job running the football. Uh, we are, I feel good about that. We're, uh, you know, throwing, running. We're picking up some third downs. Defensively, we settled in after the first drive and are playing well right now, too. Yeah, defense limiting Oklahoma State to uh, less than 50 yards on the ground. You can't say enough about the D. Well, that's a big factor in this game. We've got to be able to stop the run game. Appreciate it, Coach. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Jim. Thanks to Coach Stoops. We'll hear from Mike Gundy later on. Halftime score OSU on the short side. Welcome back to Sierra College Football Saturday in Stillwater. Boone Picking Stadium, the site. Oklahoma the leader, 13-7 at the half. Over the homestanding OSU Cowboys. Hi, everyone. Bill Landry, reasons for the here up top. Oklahoma State coaches said they had to stop OU's running game. They have not done that today. No, Oklahoma's done a good job running the football. A couple of guys came in here. Alan Patrick, we didn't know he would play, but he has run extremely well. And also Chris Brown for Oklahoma. And so they look through this first half. Alan Patrick gets, this, gets the early carry. He just burst through for a large game for Oklahoma, running the football, showing that he is healthy and able to play. And then you take a look at Chris Brown, who also bursts as well. So Oklahoma getting a one-two punch here. They're controlling this game on the ground, Bill. Not a big, not a big offensive explosion here for either team. We'll take a look at the first time, the Honda first half stats. And overall, the time of possession squarely in favor of OU. They've commanded the clock and they've been able to run the football. And Oklahoma State, after an early opening first drive, they have not any had any offense, so to speak, of. Only 19 yards after that initial opening drive. So right now it looks like Oklahoma State needs to make some adjustments, perhaps get back to what they did early in this ball game to make this a pretty tight ball game once again. All right, thank you, Gary. Let's send it down to Emily Jones. Guys, I spoke with Oklahoma State head coach Mike Gundy on his way out of the locker room. He said defensively the adjustments are simple, just stop the run. As for his offense, he said OU is not letting them go down the field. They are going to have to mix things up and go with some misdirection on the offensive side of the ball. As for this first series of the second half with OU having the ball, he said his message to his defense was simple, hit them hard. All right, thank you. And Oklahoma will get the football to start the second half. And Reggie Smith stepped right in front of Iglesias to take that one. I don't know if that was by design, but now he turns it upfield, 25-30. And he is knocked out of bounds on the OU sideline as Grant Jones stopped the play after a 32-yard return for Oklahoma. Well, this is a game, Bill, that I think that field position is key. You see Reggie Smith take it in front of Iglesias, and he gets around the edge here. He's got explosive kick return ability. He's a punt returner as well for the Sooners, and giving him good field position here to start up near the 35-yard line. So, precious yards in the kick return game, and we haven't seen Oklahoma State really take advantage of their kick return game, which is one of the best in the country. And first half possessions here for Oklahoma. You see the early touchdown and then a couple of punts and then again a nice closing drive but that one missed extra point by Garrett Harder that went off the, off the upright leaves it at 13 points instead of the 14. And on a first to 10 right up the middle Alan Patrick to the 20. He will score. No flags. Touchdown Sooners. That same burst of speed to open the game for Oklahoma. He does it here for six. 
Oklahoma State chooses to crowd the line of scrimmage with all of their defensive players. And this is what happens. It's kind of like a short yardage play that busts through there. There's nobody in the secondary. Breaks one tackle the line of scrimmage, and Alan Patrick outruns the rest of the Cowboys en route to a first play score here for Oklahoma. 65 yards for Alan Patrick on the TD run. And Patrick, just like that, people hadn't settled their into their seats to start the second half. Now Hartley, who had his first miss earlier today, comes on for the point after and splits the uprights here. And Oklahoma, Thunderbolt opening to the second half of Bedlam football here in Stillwater. Stay with us on FSN. Patrick's 65 yard touchdown run on the first play from scrimmage. Oklahoma control. Oklahoma's Alan Patrick, the longest run of the season for the Sooners. You hold it right there. You'll see there's no secondary person. He's one to the left here. Good block in that hole. He just takes it right to the house. Outruns Donovan Woods, the free safety, who cannot get over to touch Alan Patrick. Great job of blocking the line of scrimmage as well here. You see the blocking inside there and a missed tackle here by Alex Odiari, the linebacker coming across. Not going to arm tackle Alan Patrick there in the hole. And Good job of blocking up front by the Sooner offensive run. The previous longest run was Adrian Peterson's 53-yard run against Iowa State where he suffered the broken collarbone. And Patrick today hits a 65-yard home run here. And the Cowboys now find themselves trailing 20 to 7 as they take over first and 10 from the 20. What are they going to do to get back in this, Gary? Well, Oklahoma State, they had a great opening drive. They used a little bit of misdirection. They changed up what they were doing. They were running the football. They had the passing game working, short passes outside. They got a Darius Bowman into the action. They have not gotten him into the action at all in the second quarter. You need to get back to the ball, the ball in the hands of your playmakers. And flags thrown here before they get underway. False start, 72 of the offense, five-yard penalty, first down. Rick Seafried, the right guard there for Oklahoma State. You know, the big fellows there, they kind of get caught in there. Pretty easy to see. Bowman had two receptions for 27 yards in the first half. Let's see what they do now after the penalty. And it's first and 15. Handoff and Savage is tripped up near the 12 to 17 yard line. Now, Oklahoma State's first possession, Gary just mentioned, yeah, they took it the length of the field and scored a touchdown and then three punts and finally just two plays where they ran it out before the half. You look at the six and five yards there, that's on two drives and then to end the half just another 10 yards. So, really, since the initial drive, only 11 yards of offense for Oklahoma State, they were somewhat even meaningful trying to work towards the first down. So your defense living up to the billing after that first possession. Savage breaks through here, and he's out near the 24 before CJIU makes the tackle there, and it'll be third and long coming up. Now, the first half leaders for OSU, you see Reed's only thrown it six times, hasn't made a mistake there. Savage and Bowman. He's going to get more of that. They only had six first downs in the entire first half, so haven't had a lot of opportunities. Saw the time of possession, 18 minutes to only 12 for the Cowboys in that first half. They've got to make first downs and be able to get their playmakers the football. Yeah, got to get a little rhythm going. Third and six. Reed flushed out of the pocket, finds a man, and let's see where they spot the football because yeah, I think Latimer he... made the tackle. I think he's going to get the first down here. But that is Dewan Woods that is hurt. Now, Dewan Woods made the catch. I thought he was beyond the yard marker for the first down there, and he looks like he retreated somewhat, and then they made the tackle. And let's revisit our Mitsubishi Motors keys to the game for OSU as they attend to Woods. Yeah, I talked about him getting out early. They did just that, but they didn't sustain, they didn't maintain that offensive balance that they like to have and didn't get their playmakers the football. And, Return the dominance in the turn return game. They haven't had the opportunities except for the kickoff return yardage. And defensively, they have got to be relentless. They've got to go to the ball carrier. They've just gotten outmanned, I think, up front on a couple of runs there. Oklahoma State not being able to hold out that uh, rushing attack for the Sooners. Woods, third reception for 31 yards. Let's go down to Emily Jones. Now, with the addition of Adarius Bowman to the Oklahoma State offense, Dewan Woods' number 
numbers are down. He averaged a little over 80 yards per game last year. This season, he's under 50 yards per game. However, when you talk to Mike Gundy about the play of his wide receiver, he can't stop talking about how improved he is. He says, if you think about it, there are about 70 offensive plays you run in a game. If a receiver has seven catches, it's considered a good day. What does he do those other 63 plays? Well, he said what Dewan Woods is doing those other 63 plays is blocking, and he's very impressed with it. Now, it's something he really improved in. NFL scouts have also noticed that. Yeah, if you've got a big guy outside who can catch the football and also block, that's going to turn some heads because guess what? The running game, it's going to take big blocks by your receivers to make those explosive runs, and Dewan Woods has certainly added that back in the ball game here now for Oklahoma State. Zach Robinson. Placing Reed at the QB position, and he comes right over the middle. That is Bowman, and he's got a first down. So after Savage's wild run that didn't get him much, they come back and move the chains. Reggie Smith makes the tackle on the receiver, Bowman. And I wonder what they're going to do here, whether they're going to keep Zach Robinson out there back to Bobby Reed. They're choosing to get Reed back in there, but Zach Robinson, good command of the pocket, and a good throw to Darius Bowman coming across the middle on a square end route. So throwing the football here early with some success. Robinson played in, in the Baylor game and in the Tech game, and well, they've used him in this situation. Pendleton and Latimer make the stop here. Well, Bill, this is a number 10 defense in the country, the Oklahoma Sooners, and they have really stepped up their game since early in the season after the Oregon game. Really didn't play very well in the first couple weeks of the season, but since that time, Brent Venables and Bobby Jack Wright, the two co-coordinators for the defense for the Sooners, have really turned this group around. They've solidified some spots, and they've done a great job, allowing only 265 yards of ball game. That is, that is tops in the Big 12 and number six in the country. Second and 11, Robinson trying to deliver, and he does, and Woods breaks a tackle. He's in the 20, the 15, the 10. He's bumped out of bounds on the play by Lindy Holmes, stopping a touchdown. Robinson delivers to Dewan Woods, the senior out of Oklahoma City Millwood, for 54 yards and a first and goal. Well, good job here running on the outside after the catch. Nick Harris, the nickelback, not able to make the tackle there on Dewan Woods, who's a big, strong receiver. Good job by Lindy Holmes of coming in and knocking Woods out of bounds. Otherwise, it's an easy touchdown, and that's what you want from the big play receivers outside. You want to be able to run after the catch. Great job by Dewan Woods. Well, you mentioned the OU defensive numbers. Oklahoma State's the number 14 total offense team in the nation, number seven scoring offense, and they haven't gotten it going until right now here since that opening possession. Savage trying to push it in. Flag is thrown as he got down near the two, and Corey Bennett making the stop for the Sooners. Yeah, I think the Oklahoma Sooners are saying that the Cowboys jump. One of the offensive linemen there got out of their stance early, and there is a flag here on the near sideline. Sorted it out for us. Offside, 99 defense, half the distance, first down. Well, CJ IU looked like he saw something inside there, but uh, probably wasn't there. He thought somebody moved, and he actually stepped in the neutral zone to point it out. We'll take a look at CJ here. He's going to be on the end of the line of scrimmage here. Going to point in here and watch him. He sees somebody move, but he's he's in the neutral zone himself, and the ball is snapped, and hence the penalty. So, Oklahoma State, first and goal. Quarterback Reed hands it off. Savage diving. No signal yet. Now, somehow Reggie Smith came around the edge there and got him at the legs. Behind the line of scrimmage, number three, the safety, free safety for Oklahoma, got in the backfield of the Cowboys. And Sanders are thinking they've got the football, but uh, I think he's down inside the one-yard line. They've got a spot there just short of the goal line. <laughs> that is Larry Burge. I carry the football, so doesn't that count for something? Well, take a look at Reggie Smith there, who makes the tackle from the outside, grabs him by his legs and pulls him back, and then you have Latimer making the contact there, not allowing him, excuse me, that's Rufus Alexander making the hit there, not allowing him to get to the end zone. So good job by the Sanders that time. Let's see what happens here. They come out of the huddle quickly. Savage. They fake to him, and Reed scampers in on top. Bobby Reed and Boone Pickens. Says, That's what I like to see here at Boone Pickens Stadium as the Cowboys like the opening drive of the first half they score. Well, they spread the ball around, moved it offensively, throwing the football to the outside, throwing it to the receivers in the middle of Darius Bowman, then a big play by Dewan Woods. And then you cap it off here with a run play with a, a playmaker in his own, Bobby Reed, a dual threat quarterback. First chance to see him run, and 
just a naked bootleg there. He just races to the end zone. And for the point after, it'll be Ricks. Came in 40 of 42. Hit the first one. And it is good. So, Cowboys get their second TD. Boone Pickens liking what he sees here as OHU and OU. It is Bedlam. Oklahoma, 15th ranked Oklahoma, needing a win to get to the Big 12 title game. And Reed bouncing back with a one yard run to cap off the Dodge scoring drive. They included a 54 yard pass to Dewan Woods to set him up. Here is Iglesias. On the return, a 25, and out near the 27-yard line. First and 10 at the 38 for Oklahoma now. Thompson play action, and he completes this one out to the 50 as Zaslaw, Dane Zaslaw Jr. from Edmond getting just his fifth catch of the year, and Donovan Woods makes a defensive play. You know, Boone Pickens was talking about facilities giving this team more than a chance, and that big hole that we saw in the end zone, we'll talk about here in just a second. Dane Zaslaw comes out of the backfield, play action pass, and a quick, easy throw by Paul Thompson out there. And not something that the Sooners do a lot in their offense, so kind of a change up here offensively. Take a look at the, the construction work here on the west end zone of this complex. When it's completed, they'll hold 60,000, and he mentioned they'll open against Georgia next year. That's in Athens. Then they'll open up in 09 against Georgia here, and everything is done with the three phases here at Boone Pickens Stadium. Bond makes the tackle there on the ball carrier Chris Brown as he takes it to the 40-yard line. And really, it's hard to have to tell you all this. It, there's a lot of earth that's been moved. And behind those stands on the other side is the OSU Athletic Village that is going to be going in soon. And that is what it's going to look like when it's all done. And this whole building here that Gary just circled will actually have about the same square footage as Gallagher Drive Arena at the other end. Unbelievable. We walked around in this building too, and it, I tell you, it is first class. There's nothing left undone. Second down and five for Oklahoma here. Big series for the Cowboy defense as they answer here. Brown is stuffed at the line of scrimmage. Johnson and Fountain make the tackle. And if you watch Rod Johnson, the middle linebacker, he's the one that steps up and fills the hole there. That's what you want from the middle linebacker. On these counter plays, when you pull the lineman around, step up into the hole number two, Rod Johnson doing a good job. Looked like early in that first half, he kind of had a bum ankle and had to take himself out of the game for a couple of plays, but looks like at halftime they got him all taped back up and he's ready to go. OU on third down, eight of 10 today, and that's as much as anything the difference in this ball game is they have continued to move the chains and maintain possession. You worry about Oklahoma State's wear out factor, third and five here. completes it to Johnson. He's got the first down as he steps out of bounds at the 32-yard line of Oklahoma State. Anderson covered. Uh, just way too much cushion on the outside from Oklahoma State. Manuel Johnson just goes down about 12 yards and just turns around and stands there. There's not a cowboy within about seven or eight yards of when Paul Thompson decides to throw the football out there. Good decision making by him, finding an open receiver. And Mike Gundy, he's trying to get his troops fired up. He knows what's at stake here a chance for them to go to a bowl game perhaps. They need their seventh win to guarantee a bowl victory for the Cowboys, and the Sooners, no doubt about it, they want to win the Big 12 South with the victory here today. Thompson gives the handoff here, and Patrick is off rumbling again, and Patrick and Brown, what a duo. Woods making the tackle. Well, Alan Patrick, nobody talks about how physical he is as a running back, but this shows you that he has the ability to be somewhat like Adrian Peterson. He'll lower his head and bring on contact, breaking the tackle of a middle linebacker, Rod Johnson, who goes about 250 pounds. Looks like he might win that battle. But good job that time by Alan Patrick and Bob Stoops giving a little congratulations when he comes to the sideline. Junior out of Conway, South Carolina, who last year they moved him from the defensive side in the early part of 05. Ran for 136 yards, had a couple of scores, had four receptions. And then this year, Peterson goes down, Patrick steps in, and man, as he responded, and now coming off the ankle sprain, he's been great here today. This is Brown, and Brown takes it down near the 12-yard line. Lacey and Marcus Brown make the tackle for OSU, and this is behind a young offensive line as well. Well, Trent Williams, number 71, is doing a great job. He's gonna block Darnell Smith. Watch this block as it unfolds. Darnell Smith has to get off the block. He just can't do it. 
and that's going to allow Chris Brown to get around the edge here. Good blocking on the edge, and that way uh, Chris Brown comes up and makes some yardage. So this offensive line for Oklahoma, Trent Smith's had a, Trent Williams has had a nice day, and everyone across the board there giving some holes for these running backs from Oklahoma. Now, Trent Williams, he's a true freshman from Longview, Texas. Second and seven for the Sooners. And again, Brown breaking tackles, almost dives in and falls down near the one-yard line before Lacey finally brought him to a halt. Well, when you come up and make a tackle here at Oklahoma State's Patrick Levine, number four, if you just watch him get into the hole, he's going to step up there and watch he's going to miss. Whoop, right there, he doesn't get anything. He doesn't get anything on Chris Brown because Chris Brown has patience with his footwork. Patrick Levine overextended that time, not able to make the tackle, and the ball is now at the one-yard line. Chatham and Lawson Kennedy come in for OSU now in the goal line situation defensively. And it's first and goal from the one. And what a drive for OU to answer after OSU got everybody jacked up with their touchdown. Brown, touchdown Oklahoma. And the Sooners tack on six more. They take their second possession, a little bit more traditional length of the field after Patrick on the opening possession with 65 yards for a score. Well, guess where they go again? Right behind that 6'5", 321 pounded freshman, 71, Trent Williams on the right side. And Chris Brown's going to like what he sees on the tape here. Watch the big fella get up there and block and open the hole here on the offensive side. And they just clear out that sideline. Zaslaw makes a good block on the outside, number 45, and scoots right into the end zone. Well, the point after it is Hartley. It is good. Oklahoma up by 13 now. Chris Brown gets his second TD of the afternoon, and the Sooners lead it 27 to 14. Last year in Norman, Oklahoma running back Adrian Peterson ran wild 237 yards, including a school record 210 in the second half alone. He led the Sooners to a thumping of the Cowboys 42 to 14. His two touchdown runs of the biggest length, 84 and 71 yards for Adrian Peterson. And he enters today needing 151 yards rushing to become the all-time leading rusher in Oklahoma history. Sidelined again, they check for the collarbone, unable to go today. Well, now you look ahead for Oklahoma. If they win, there is next week in the Big yeah. 12 championship game. Yeah, we talked to Bob Stoops about it and still no word there. They'll do another evaluation on Adrian on Sunday or Monday to determine if they play in the Big 12 championship game, if he'd be available to them for perhaps playing that football game. Hartley's kick goes out of the end zone. Cowboys first and 10 from the 20. And Peterson is currently number four on the OU all-time rushing charts behind Sims. Washington Owens at 3,968. So Bill, you talked 151 yards, and I think that's something that Adrian Peterson would like to have. If he's able to play, he's going to play. I think he's too much of a competitor to not play in a football game if he's given the green light. Yeah, it will be interesting. And uh, after this game, if Oklahoma wins, all the attention will go to the doctors <laughs> on yeah. Sunday and Monday. And Bob Stoops says, that's, you just take it a week at a time, you see what happens. But you look at what the, these two running backs have done, Chris Brown and Alan Patrick. Alan Patrick, 165 yards rushing today. Chris Brown, not so bad either, 17 carries, 73 yards. So hey, Greg. getting the ball moving north and south on the ground are the Sooners. And the Pokes better at least move the ball a little bit, give that defense a little bit of a breather here, huh? They've got to stay on the field. They've got to sustain some drives, and they've got to keep this balance here. They've got to throw the ball around a little more effectively than they did in that second quarter. First and 10 from the 20. Bobby Reed, incomplete, nearly picked off by Nick Harris, who reached in to slap it away. Let's go down to Jim Knox. All right, Bill, I've been up behind the Oklahoma bench all game long, and I tell you what, Adrian Peterson has turned into one heck of a, not only a coach, but a cheerleader. Chris Brown scores a touchdown. He's back there. He's the first one to congratulate him, as well as Alan Packard. Then he knows where the bread and butter is. Goes to the offense line, Messner, Robinson, Cooper, Walker, Williams. Gives them all high fives on that bench. Adrian Peterson, you guys said it. If healthy, he will definitely come back. They'll know that result probably next Monday or Tuesday. If they win this game, they'll play in the Big 12 championship game. They'll look at those x-rays again, and they'll diagnose it right there on the spot. Yeah, and he's staying involved in the football, oh, so to speak, also. He's going to meetings, going to those things. He's involved in, in this a a aspect of it, and he's actually got a wristband on. He's got those plays right there, so he knows what the game plan is, and Adrian Peterson perhaps has a chance to step out there. 
couldn't be a lack of knowledge or knowing what's going on in the system. And he's been doing all the cardio work and riding the bike and doing those kind of things. He's always chiseled in great shape as far as conditioning is concerned. Oklahoma State says, well, don't just say this thing's over yet. We still got plenty of time. Well, clock counting here, third quarter. Third and three, though, obviously a big play coming up for the Pokes. Reed delivers on the completion to the 35 and still breaking tackles. Pettigrew, the tight end, brought down by Harris. Brandon Pettigrew, the sophomore from Tyler, Texas, had a couple of scores against Baylor. Did not catch any balls last week against Texas Tech. Oh, he's a big target, 6'5", tight end. Going to come open to the left side here for Bobby Reed. He works away from the middle linebacker. Good job of getting open there. Zach Latimer not able to get over there to cover him. So the big tight end gets a first down here for Oklahoma State. Pettigrew's first reception today for 19 yards out of Tyler Lee. The number three receiver on this football team, the tight end. First and 10 at the 46-yard line now. Woods wide left. Bowman goes in motion behind the quarterback Reed. Cowboys. Good protection for Reed, and he delivers to Bowman. He is upended inside the 40-yard line by Nick Harris. And the Cowboys start to show a little rhythm with back-to-back -back drives here. Well, the protection has been decent enough to where Bobby Reed's able to move around in the pocket. He's not going to have any pressure in front of his face. He kind of rolls to his right to give him a couple extra yards. There's nobody around him there. He's watching his receivers down the field. He finds Bowman, but he also had his big tight end Pettigrew in the same area. He could have thrown either one up. Picks up 17, and it's first and 10 at the 37-yard line of the Sooners. Little razzle-dazzle. They're looking to throw, and it is complete. Bowman at the 25-yard line as the handoff and then the pass from Newton. Well, I think the Sooners actually did a good job of playing the deep route here, but they didn't take care of the intermediate route, which is what Adarius Bowman is. You see the receiver going down deep. That's Dewan Woods. And coming across the field, Adarius Bowman at about 12 yards. Just stepped out of bounds. Now, Oklahoma, first time penalty's been a factor. Second and 20. Ball moved back to the 24-yard line. Pettigrew resets on the right. Robinson, the quarterback. And he's got Pettigrew. 15, breaks a tackle, still on his feet, powering, almost motors into the end zone. What a play, Smith and Carter finally bring down Brandon Pettigrew. Well, this is a physical, intimidating football game, and I tell you, Brandon Pettigrew says, hey, you give me the football, I'm gonna make something happen with it. Watch him here just destroy the, the Sooners tacklers. No chance for Marcus Walker to grab him low. Nick Harris misses Reggie Smith. He's just having to lasso him, get on top to try to get him down. Is that the epitome of what Mike Gundy was telling us about this Bedlam game comes down to one thing, toughness. The fourth quarter coming up in Bedlam football. End of the third with Oklahoma with a 27 to 14 lead and OSU knocking on the door. You're watching Big 12 football presented by Kia Sara on FSN. Robinson, the quarterback, Reed has been taken to the locker room as they check on his shoulder. It is third and goal from the four. Robinson rolls out. Stopped down near the one. Thought he might go to Bowman, but I think Robinson saw a little gap here, Gary. Well, Lewis Baker, the weak side linebacker, comes through, and he's trying to make a play here. Watch number 16 cut through there and get right underneath the legs here. He's going to jump right over and whoop, fly by, and good job. The linebacker, Rufus Alexander, coming around and making the tackle, stopping it short. So fourth down here, and looks like uh, Mike Gunny's electing to go for it at the one-yard line. We are in the early moments of the fourth quarter, fourth and goal. Savage the running back behind the quarterback, Robinson. Clausen also in there. Here is Robinson. Tries to dive over, lost the football, and it's recovered. No, not yet. Still under contention, and Oklahoma has recovered the football. Demario Pleasant, the junior from Louisville, Texas, and the Sooners recover it in the end zone. 
We talked about a possible big player or mistake to turn this game, and this might do it. Well, this is Zach Robinson making a huge mistake here. If you take him around the edge here, and you'll stop it right when I tell you, stop it right there. You can go to the outside, you can pitch it. You got your pitch man coming right to the end zone. Nobody out there to him. Dontrell Savage could have had an easy touchdown on the pitch, but Zach Robinson elected to take it up into the heart of the defense. Reggie Smith, the first to contact him there, trying to dive up and take a look there. And Zach Latimer making the contact as well. Curtis Lofton helping. The ball is loose. He fumbled the ball out. Looked like he tried to advance it towards the goal line. Tried to break that plane and wasn't able to do so. The play is under review. And as they sort it out, we wait, obviously. Ball was fumbled in the field of play into the end zone. Recovered by Oklahoma. That's a touchback. First down on the 20. All right. The calling on the field shall stand, and Oklahoma will get a first and 10 from the 20-yard line, and again, you get to that point in replay, and my gosh, we know we've had enough controversy. Oklahoma certainly knows that, but it's got to be without a doubt, Gary. Now we'll take another look at it here, and Zach Robinson trying to extend that football over. The ball is coming out there. Doesn't have, doesn't have control of it, doesn't break the plane of the goal line, but really the play here is to Dontrell Savage. If he had pitched the ball out there to him, there's no Oklahoma player responsible for him on that option play, and Zach Robinson decided to take it up inside, which Shows here was a, it was the wrong decision to make. They did not see overwhelming evidence in the video. So as a result, Sooners get it first and 10 at their own 20 with 13 19 to go in the fourth quarter. And surprise, surprise, they come back to their running game, which has been absolute dominance today. And Nathan made the tackle here. Well, let's take a look here as Dontrell Savage goes around here. This is the option play. You see the lead block there, the load block on the end. And if you hold it right there, stop it. You can see here, he's cutting up. He just got to pitch his football. There is no way that he could get out there to make that tackle. That's Marcus Walker. Go ahead and let it roll here. A little pitch, and it would have been a touchdown. But he chooses to go in there to the heart of the defense, and they knock the ball loose, and they get it going the other way. Right, third and six as the Cowboy fans urge their players on. Sooners third and six from the 24 of OU. Brown, and he is tripped up. Knifing through is Andre Sexton, the leading tackler on the year, junior out of Cy Falls High School down in the Houston suburban area. And give that Cowboy defense some credit as could have been a very demoralizing play. They come back and turn things around and give their offense or should give them a pretty good opportunity here well, in their return game. Yeah, Oklahoma's done a good job of running the football today against this uh, Cowboy defense. They like to run it three times there, but good job. They, they responded, the Cowboys did, and now they're going to force a punt. Tommy Devereaux is the deep man. Staying away from it, and it bounces over to the Oklahoma sideline. So good field position for OSU with 11.06 to go in the game here in Stillwater. I'm sure he'll talk to Zach about that and we'll review that goal line play. First to 10 at midfield. Reed will have to scramble with the football. Got a big block! Oh, mama, what a hit on Rufus Alexander by Dewan Woods. And that gets this crowd juiced here at Stillwater. Well, sometimes it takes a block like that to kind of get everybody going. And Dewan Woods on the outside. We talked about him and his frame. Huge receiver just cleans up Mr. Alexander. And then Reed definitely steps right out of bounds. Thank you very much. Fans see that on the big board here. Rufus Alexander's had plenty of big hits. Absorbed one there. First to 10 at the 37 for OSU. Bowman will go in motion. Reed rolls out that way. Gonna keep the football again. Stop near the 32 yard line. Curtis Lofton, sophomore from Kingfisher, Oklahoma. Fire from the OSU campus makes the stop. Well, Oklahoma State in the first half, 105 total yards. Here in the second half, with 10 plus minutes to go in the ball game, already 198 yards. Well, they've thrown the ball around a little bit more. They're not doing a great job of running the ball. Dontrell Savage only 50 yards in his ball game. Bobby Reed 30 yards on the ground. So those two getting get the bulk of the work running the football, but the passing game has picked up significantly here for Oklahoma State here in the second half. Second and five of the 32. Savage ran for 122 scores last week in the loss to Tech. Toasting gets a carry here. Hard yards against that OU defense that 
against the run is second in the league, 20th in the nation, only just 97 a game. Let's go down to Jim Knox with more on injuries. All right, Demarcus Granger, they, you may want remember he was hobbled off that last defensive stand at the goal line. Well, apparently the Sooners' depth on defensive line just got a little thin. Demarcus Granger out right now with an ankle sprain. Thank you, Jim. Now they got C.J. IU in there at the nose right there, number 99. That's where Granger would normally be. We've gone with a three-man line here several times this season for, for Oklahoma, and they bring the perimeter players, all these different guys around the edge, and they'll, they'll blitz. They'll show a lot of different things here to this quarterback. Third and five for Let's Robinson go. this time. He delivers to Bowman. Bowman hangs on and drags two of them with him across the 20-yard line. Move those chains as Lewis Baker brings him down. Well, it was a zone blitz by Oklahoma that time. They choose to bring him on from the weak side, which is the left side of the quarterback. He just throws the ball out there nicely to Darius Bowman. Good job of executing it there. He's a big body. He's going to carry some of, the, some of those defenders down the field. And get a nice job with yards after the catch that time. 11 yards, six receptions, 80 yards for the day for Bowman. First and 10 pokes at the 19. And again, Toasted breaking tackles at the 10, and he moves it all the way to the five-yard line. Keith Toasted, the freshman from Angleton, Texas. He came in with 540 yards rushing and four scores. Harris tackled him here. Good job of running here. Good block at the point of attack. Nobody's in the hole there. Toasted just breaks the tackle there. Lindy Holmes can't get him down with a two or three yard gain, and he just takes over, runs over Nick Harris. Are we seeing the depth of running back for these two teams today? And as a result, first down and goal to go. And Toasted trying to hang on as he gets a couple of yards near the three yard line. Oklahoma State, they've done a great job rushing the ball all year, Bill. They actually have four players who have rushed for over 400 yards this season and have a chance to get to four of over 500 yards. Bobby Reed being able to get to that, that mark. Take a look here, over 400 yards each, and Bobby Reed, if he gets up to 500 yards, it'd be a tremendous feat to have that kind of running power. They spread it around. All these guys are getting the action. We haven't seen Mike Hamilton today, who had the bulk of the work early this season. Best running team in the league coming in. OU's overshadowing the day, but they've gotten it going with the rushing game here in the second half. Second and goal from the three. Reed, he looked to the outside and then takes it up the middle. And he is stopped by Carl Pendleton at the two, it appears. Yeah, he wanted to one looks on the outside. It was man-to-man -man coverage out there. And Lindy Holmes has got him right there. Good coverage. Reed back to the quarterback. He stops and goes underneath. And Bobby Reed seeing that good coverage. He chooses not to throw the football and make a negative play. And Bobby Reed's got an equipment problem here. He's coming to the sideline. So that'll send Robinson back into the heat of action with a third and goal from the two. He kind of lost a snap or something on his face mask or his chin strap, and he had to come out. Well, Robinson take the snap here. Toasting is the lone back. Oh. Robinson, that pass was deflected and nearly picked off. And again, C.J. IU, he has played great down the stretch. He had a couple of sacks in the Baylor game, Gary, and Got those big hands up and knocked that one away. Yeah, he can play inside, he can play outside. His stock is really rising, I think, as a defensive lineman, a guy who has multiple ability. Trying again to go to Dewan Woods on the outside. Lindy Holmes with the one on coverage. And, you know, he used to throw it out there to his brother, Rashawn Woods, for Oklahoma State years ago. And trying to do the same thing there, but IU not allowing the ball to get out there. Critical play coming up. OSU wants to think about it. So they'll call a timeout here with 6.45 to go in the fourth. We'll return after this word from Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Pepper bottle. Welcome back, critical part of the game, 6.46 to play. Oklahoma State with the football, fourth down and goal. From the two, Bobby Reed back in the game as a quarterback. OU's red zone defense, here's how they've done. The second time now, Mike Gundy choosing to go for here inside the five-yard line against the Sooner defense. Hosting in motion, Reed looking Ball's left. Gone. Touchdown, Oklahoma State. Dewan Woods and OSU stays right in the hunt. Well, just so much room to work with here. Reggie Smith has inside coverage on Dewan Woods, but when he turns to go to the outside, there's no way that Reggie Smith is going to come over to make this play. Good easy throw for Bobby Reed, and 
Reggie Smith just too far inside, too much real estate to work with for Dewan Woods to go out there and make that throw. And now the out, point snap. after with a 27-20. Remember, Hartley missed one earlier for Oklahoma. You never know how those things are going to play out. Ball's gone. And the kick is good. Ricks bangs it through. Jason, the sophomore, Woods the TD, and it's 27-21. Woods on the TD reception. Oklahoma State, no time to celebrate. The 10-play, 60-yard drive on the Dodge scoring drive took 4.25. It was worth it. They got the touchdown, and now Redden will kick it off for the Cowboys. Glacius and Smith, both dangerous return men. Smith. Says, I'll take a knee and bring it out to the 20-yard line. All right, first to 10 of the 23 now for Oklahoma. And Patrick Allen, junior out of Conway, South Carolina, is stopped by Jeremy Nathan and the clock ticking here. Remember, Mike Gundy's got two timeouts left to work with. Yeah, they'll call him after this down in the in the third down if they're able to stop them before they get a first down. So Oklahoma trying to use as much time on the clock as possible. Paul Thompson's going to take it down to the very last tick, and I'd be very surprised if they do anything but run the football here. Patrick, 22 carries, 167 yards. Chris Brown, 19 for 74 yards today to pace this ground attack of Oklahoma. Thompson on second and nine. And a leg tackle, a loss on the play as Patrick is brought down by Marquis Fountain. And now Oklahoma State calls timeout with 143. We make a change on our clock that you're looking at. Good play for a negative game there. That time by Marquis Fountain getting up the field, the defensive end not allowing Alan Patrick with his speed to get around the edge. So Mop Stoops trying to figure out here what does he need to do to hang on to win this football game. It's clock management now for both these football teams using your timeouts and Hopefully your offensive, offensive and defensive teams can do what they need to for to your respective team to get the ball back if that's what you're looking for. They just get lathered up for this as uh, we come down to 1.43 to go, third and 13. And the Cowboys need one more stop in order to get the football back. Now going off, excuse me, uh, shotgun here for Oklahoma. Thompson. Comes up, maybe changing the play. Going to keep the football. Nothing silly here, and OSU roars as he stopped at the 21 by Van Zandt and Chatham, and they stopped the clock. Now they're out of timeouts. It's the bad news. The good news, they're going to get the football back, and they should get it back in pretty good position here. Well, great job by Jerry Chatham, number 96, coming up there. He just destroys the offensive guard who doesn't make a good enough effort to block him, and he gets one hand on Paul Thompson and brings him down. He knows his defense is doing a good job, and Gundy's using his timeouts. That's his last one, so Oklahoma is going to be punting the football here at Oklahoma State. And looks like we'll have Bill just about a minute and 20 or so to go on the clock. And remember here is Cohen on to punt. Junior out of Houston, Texas. Devereaux catches the football. Spins. Oklahoma, great coverage. 36, 37 yard line, a 45 yard punt, three yard return. And the clock stopped until they're ready to establish possession. And Oklahoma State will get the football. Remember, the Cowboys, six and five, need to win the seal of bowl bid. Kansas lost today. They're six and six. Six wins only means you're bowl eligible. And Oklahoma, a win. They're to Kansas City in the Dr. Pepper Big 12 championship game against Nebraska. A loss, and Texas would go. First to 10. Robinson. He delivers. And it is to Woods at the 43 yard line. Well, Zach Robinson get the nod here in the no huddle throwing quarterback. Zach Robinson has done that most of the day today. And Robinson. Incomplete. That'll stop the clock with 104 to go. And it'll be 
third and two coming up. First down markers brought to you by Overstock.com, your online source for savings on everything from video games to big screen TVs. Now the most important thing here is a first down for Oklahoma State. The clock will stop. If they get a first down, they'll be able to get up the line of scrimmage, but very important third down here. You'd like to get that first down out of the way right now. Third and two. Robinson. Ball's gone! Overthrows Dewan Woods and fourth down now as we cut inside a minute. Well, a tough play call now for Mike Gundy and Larry Fedora. What do you do here on fourth down? Fourth and two in this situation. Boy, you've got your actually your number two quarterback in the ball game, Zach Robinson. Bobby Reed, who's played the bulk of the snaps this season, on the sidelines, and they're choosing to go with Zach Robinson in this two-minute situation. And this could be the season here for Oklahoma State. Fourth and two, Cowboys out of timeouts. They're at the 46-yard line. Robinson keeps the football. He's got the first down. Now they'll have to hustle. Crosses midfield at the 49. Rufus Alexander making the tackle. The clock stops, no doubt about it. They've got a chance to get up there. No hurry here. They need to get up the line of scrimmage. They'll set the play in motion here. Running play, and should be ready to snap the ball within a second or two. And with 52 seconds to go. First and 10. Robinson. Both gone. Incomplete. Intended for Bowman. Getting a hand in there was Lewis Baker. So they were risking throwing over the middle. As long as it's enough for a first down yardage, look at Lewis Baker, number 16. He's got inside the coverage there on Adarius Bowman. If he does get a couple of hands on it, not allowing Bowman to pull that ball in. But, Bill, that's an okay place to throw the football in college football because on the first down, you're going to get a, a clock yeah. stop. You've got to make sure you're deep enough. He was. He's had six receptions today. Second and ten at the 49. Robinson. Pulls forward. He did not get the first down. He stopped near the 42-yard line, and that clock, clock keeps moving. Now, no timeouts. Gonna, Baker made the tackle. They may have to stop the clock here with a quick throw to the ground, or they're going to just run a play. Looks like they got a play called here. Third down. In trouble. And smartly got rid of him, because if he is sacked there, that's probably the ball game. And even a... Going to bring up another fourth down here, I think, for Oklahoma. Excuse me, Oklahoma State. I think he's got a real decision here. You know, you got to get that first down. What's the best play to do that? Are you going to run the football again as you did previously? It looks to me like Zach Robinson might be a little winded out there. Perhaps, perhaps not ready to play in this, this ball game as much as he has. Cowboys, fourth down. They need three for the first down, but obviously the clock, the bigger concern. Robinson, and it's complete to Parks. He's to the 25-yard line. That'll stop the clock momentarily. Smith makes the tackle. 12 seconds to go. You spike it or run a play? I think you do whatever you can. If you can get back and you can throw one up there, you get two shots at the end zone, take a shot. Robinson will do just that. And he spikes the football. All right. So yeah. open. They're well, fortunate, with, though. Yeah, even with this, you're going to have two plays here to run, and you got to throw them towards the end zone, or at least out on the sidelines, out of bounds. Not a lot of time to work with here. Ten seconds, you'll have a chance to run two plays, I think, offensively, Bill. And Zach Robinson throwing outside to Parks here, the second receiver on the out on this on the slant route. Ten seconds remaining. Second down. And I think you got to go to your playmakers, DeWan Woods and Adarius Bowman. They're on the near sideline. They come after Robinson. Incomplete. Bowman over the middle. That would have been enough for a first down. The clock would have stopped. They would have had another play yeah. at the five-yard line if he had been tackled right there. So now they're going to have to throw the ball into the end zone. There's no other opportunity here for Oklahoma State. They can live a look at it. Decent throw up high, though. That 6'5 receiver is stretching his, his frame all the way out, not able to pull that ball down. So this is a season for Oklahoma State to determine whether they go to a bowl game or whether the University of Oklahoma goes to the Big 12 championship. Price and Pettigrew are in the ball game. Here it is. With five seconds to go. Robinson, they come after him again. He lofts it. Incomplete ball game. Oklahoma, Big 12 South champs. The Sooners are headed to Kansas City and the Big 12 championship game. 
Lindy Holmes knocked it away, and the Sooners win a thriller at Bedlam football. Great ball game here today with the Sooners and the Cowboys, no doubt about that, back and forth. Hey, the Oklahoma State Cowboys show a little resolve coming back in this football game. Oklahoma seemed like they were in complete control run of the football, but the Cowboy defense responded, Bill, with a chance here to tie it up here at the end with a, perhaps a field, excuse me, an extra point to win the ball game, but Bob Stoops gets his Big 12 championship berth now with his win in this football game. Great job here by the Sooner defense at the end. Lindy Holmes gonna be able to tip this ball away, away from Dewan Woods where he cannot catch the football. Great job tip there. I don't know if he'd been able to catch it as well. Mike Gundy, they gave it a shot. He, unfortunately for the Cowboys, he's seen that story before. Bob Stoops on the other sideline. Boy. <laughs> well, we got through that one, huh, Bob? That's what he's saying. And the emotion shown here of Bedlam football as it is Oklahoma, the South champ, Gary, what a ball game. Yeah, and then you got the six and six Oklahoma State Cowboys. Whether or not they're gonna go to a bowl game, we're gonna have to figure that out here as this thing unfolds, because you have two six and six teams now with Kansas in the same mix, so, but a huge win for Oklahoma. Coming away with the, the berth now to Big 12 championship game, and it'll be a fun one to watch against Nebraska. Bedlam lives up to its name once again here in Stillwater. The disappointed Cowboy fans and elated Oklahoma sideline as the Sooners move on for the Big 12 championship. Bill Land for Gary Reeves and Jim Knox and Emily Jones sing so long from Stillwater. Oklahoma 27, OSU 21.